changes does it feel like it would at all looking at it only the old stand the riverside that's the nearest i can think to it and of course the boardroom which we've just been in as, mm. as you saw the reaction from me was well home yeah. <laughs> a nice place, it, uh, it's still got the, the feeling of uh, Ewood, mm. but the rest of it, it's modern, mm. isn't it, you know, and, and modern is good, I suppose, to the next generation, Yeah. but uh, as you get a little older, then the memories that you've got, you would like to keep, and uh, there have been some great memories here. Yeah, what, what would you pick out as being some of the, the highlights of, of your stay? Coming here, Yeah. because I'd had uh, 14 years at one club from a schoolboy with Sheffield United and mm. and basically a chance to move to other clubs had come and gone and uh, I never thought that I would leave Sheffield United. It, it mm. was just a tradition to when you finish playing then you're a coach mm. and then eventually if you look and manage your own club and uh, the year that uh, Blackburn went up from the third division to the second division then so uh, they were bottom. Mm. At Christmas time with Sheffield Wednesday, and uh, mm. that was when Gary. the first little hint came, and I thought you must be joking. <laughs> uh, Sheffield United, we're top of the league with 15 points. We're, we're going to mm. storm away with this, and what happens? We get annihilated mm. uh, at Hillsborough, and uh, after that, we just fell apart. Mm. And uh, Harry Aslam was the boss then, and we sat down. A funny story. And he said, uh, Mickey, I need, what do we need? I said, well, we need to get shut of all the southerners mm -hmm. and we need to get shut of all the foreigners, but we need a big striker. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, well, what would you do? <laughs> so he put me, I put everybody on the list, see what happens. Mm -hmm. And he did do. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, shit. <laughs> because you've got good mates in the team as well, you mm -hmm. know. And we went through the summer, not one bid for one player. Sabella yeah. went to Leeds, the only mm. one, for big money. And we were looking at it, and we'd just done a, the usual five mile run pre season. Come jogging into the car park. I saw Bob Hutton. Mm. And I thought, oh, brilliant. Well, I'll, I'll speak to you after, Bob. Oh, no problem again. And then the voice came Can I talk to you? Mm. The gaffer. He says, What do you want? He said, uh, I've had one offer for one player. Mm. He said, I'm sorry, but I've sold you. Mm. He said, I'm not asking if you want to go, mm. but I've sold you. Mm. And I said, to who? He said, well, they want X amount of money for Bob. Mm. Would you fancy going to Blackburn? Mm. And I said, I'm just that. third division again. Mm. Yeah, why not? Yeah. How would pay me the respect to think that I could improve his squad? And my job then was was basically to come here and show how what I could give the squad. Mm. Basically, he didn't promise me a first team place. That was there if I was willing to work for it. They were a very very good side. I was very respectful to Howard for choosing me, and I thought, why not? Mm. So I took the journey here. Yeah. And Absolutely the best thing I could have done for my career mm. at that time. Good, I'm glad it, it panned out that way because did, how, how did it compare in stature compared to what you're leaving behind? Blackman is a big club, mm. a great tradition. Um, I was looking at Sheffield United because Sheffield United had had their glory years mm. uh, from the 70s to 74 with, with mm. Tony Curry and Woodward and I was very pleased to be part of that history in the club. Mm. Uh, but coming here, it, it was a chance to build something again yeah. with the expectations that sometimes, you know, too many years at the club, you're part of the furniture mm. and and your, your career stays at that level. Mm. But I'd just done six games, seven games for the England B side and that had given me a kick up the backside that said, mm. hey, hey, what are you doing here? Mm. And then when Howard came, and the opportunity was to come and show uh, what I could do and, and the opportunity to maybe be on the ball that's rolling. Mm. I couldn't say no to that. And Howard and, and Mickey Heaton at that time were two, uh, two fabulous people. Mm. 
But do you think that they, they overachieved with what was... If you talk about the financial problems the club had, no money to pay for milk bills and things. Do they, do they achieve more than expected with the resources they had available to them? Uh, at that time, yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, he had a good side. Uh, everybody in, in Blackburn expected him to go out and use a lot of money to buy players. Mm-hmm. He brought in two. Mm. Roger De Vries for Hull on a free and and the little money he paid for me at that time and that was it mm. but he complimented his staff with with two players that were like him mm. very dedicated had the club at heart was a team player first and foremost mm. and could help the other players uh, but to start a new career mm. to have to prove yourself again uh, was a, a good pick me up because the first training we had here, and I came in to Blackburn, and we had a five-a-side, supposed to be a warm-up. When you get new players coming into a squad, there's no friendly five-a-side. Mm. Because I wanted my place. Yeah. So the first thing I had to do is to be, get shut of the guy that's in front of me, mm. which went very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they knew about me, they, knew, they played against me, they had respect for me, but there was also the question, are you good enough for us? Mm. And that question had to be answered that first day, not in a week. Mm. And I think that approach would do a lot of players, the modern players, a lot of help today. Mm. And don't think about the poor age packet you're taking on, but think about the adulation, the status you get every Tuesday and Saturday in them days, two mm. games a week, here in, in front of 15, 16,000 people, you know? That's part of the game that has gone, I think. Mm. Player, we say some players are loyal, of course they are. You'll always get that. But most players are thinking it's a short career, I've got to move on, mm. you know? And I, and I think that's what happens, that you don't get continuity in the side mm. great year fabulous year yeah. unbelievable really when you think back to it and the pitch is better than it was then we, you nearly had to play in Wellington's at times then <laughs> there's that much water on it but you know it, it, it had a great atmosphere and I, it, you know you just see a little bit here remember this end here Finchie yeah. Sheffield Wednesday yeah. at home mm. 25 yards out we practiced it all week on the training part. I would say, just put it down, hit it. Mm. I said, you know, put it down, hit it. Straight in the top corner there, we won 1-0. Yeah. Mm. And we had our ass kicked for 45 minutes. Mm. We won 1-0. And he just comes in, got another free kick, just a bit further out. And he said, somebody else, I think it was Noel we're going to take. Come on, let him do it. I missed that time, but we won the game. You know, and you can just sit here and see the picture as it is now Mm. and it lives in the memory because you always want to come to a club as a good player but you always want to leave the club when the time is right as a good memory Mm. that the fans believe that you gave them something and I think it was just honesty Mm. I love the game and uh, you know no matter what it was it was a great enjoyment to be part of it Everyone's always talked about Blackburn as being a family club. Is that something you really felt from your arrival here? Yeah, it was exactly the same as Sheffield United. Mm. Uh, They took care of you. You know, the groundsmen and the washerwomen, they're the first two people in a football club. You've got to meet, shake their hands because they're the coffee and biscuit people in the morning. (laughs) You know, and and you get to know them and they they take you in, they take you to your hearts and you're part of their family as well. And we all remember Sheeran and Clayton and, and fabulous players. But don't forget the Jim Brannigans of the world and the, the Jim Arnolds of the world. Mm-hmm. Derek Fazakli was a big hero at that time. Glenn Keeley, Noel Brothers. They just were a team of exceptional human beings in that two years I was here. Mm-hmm. And of that selection of players, when, when you get a chance to come back over, do you still speak to a number of these lads? Is it part of your regular routine to see how they're all getting on? Well, it, it's more a regular routine when I'm in, in Sheffield, of course, mm. because I was there most of the time. And I've only been back here once before, and that was when a Norwegian boy was here, uh, Martin Andreessen. And, uh, you know, I would love to come back off. And, and I will do now, I'm st- I want to build bridges with, with Darren and the community uh, coaching side and with the academy here. 
you know, and it, it would be nice to just say, go over and have a weekend in Blackburn and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And especially the last two days, because it's not rained. <laughs> You've caught just the right time. Well, I've, I've took photographs because they won't believe me. <laughs>